Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2024 FLAF Q&A panel sessions. I'm Gabe Castro, a local Philadelphia filmmaker and a member of the reviewing committee. Today, we'll be talking to filmmakers with films that are a part of this year's festival. So I'd start by uh, inviting our filmmakers to talk about themselves, their roles in this film, and what their film is about. Okay, so my name is Ethan Lewy Jansen. I'm the director, but also cinematographer and editor of the film Itunino, which is a sci-fi about climate change. It's a contemplative sci-fi about climate change and also a love story. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, I am Armando Bautista. I am the producer and um, screenwriter and the actor too. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, looking forward to, to talking about this film. It was a very atmospheric film, um, a lot of lingering, I felt like really sitting in the moments and um, experiencing this world that was uh, very complex um, and beautifully told the story, uh, especially between these two characters and, and in this world, you built this entire world. <laughs> so um, I'd love to hear about what uh, motivated? What was the inspiration for this film? So the very first idea started during the pandemic and it was very much born out of uh, the sense of being trapped and feeling isolated and also therefore wanting to make a film to express or just get out some of this sense of entrapment and isolation. And um, when I said to Armando, well, we could make a film together. I can shoot it, you can act. And then we, uh, we stay in our bubble because here in the UK, you had to stay in your bubble and you couldn't travel. And you couldn't do anything but walk to certain areas and not farther away than I don't know how many minutes. And so I said, but well, we could still make a film together if we just keep it local, film it in the house, you act and I shoot, then we have film. So the original idea was that it was going to be about a climate migrant who is stuck in a house that has an artificial intelligence system. And many of those ingredients are still there, but because we didn't film it during the pandemic and started actually really working on it after the pandemic, we added more ingredients and then it became really a love story between two migrants who discovered that they speak the same language and then try to communicate with each other in the same world that is um, sort of under constant surveillance and um, also they're both climate migrants and um, yeah the element of surveillance came in because uh, one politician here in the UK at some point said that all asylum seekers should be electronically tagged and followed around electronically and I thought well what's next are they going to record us too so um, thinking about that, it became an important element in the film. Yeah, after the, um, the edition, I started to write the, the dialogues in mystic and Spanish too. And we talked to each other about the project, about the approach. And then we talked with the, another um, poet. With, uh, with yes, the, yeah, the poet, and she was involved to the project after that. And the result it was very nice, very interesting for us. And we are very happy. Yeah, yeah, that theme of isolation, like when we're looking at it through the view of us, you know, being in the pandemic, there were so many parts of that, but also just like the immigration journey, right? The isolation of not being able to communicate. Um, that silence felt very heavy, a little often in the film. Um, and also very eerie having that surveillance in the constant, like if you're not being productive, uh, you're at risk now um, and kind of tying someone's like uh, place in this world to productivity is uh, like it's a sci-fi film, but it also felt at times like a horror film, but then also like a romance as well. So there's a lot of levels that I really appreciated about that film. It, you know, you talked a little bit about it with you know, being stuck in your bubble. Um, but what were some of the, the challenges that you faced in creating this film or the, or the most challenging part of creating this film? It's very strange because um, we decided early on on an unusual approach 
in the sense that we decided quite early to not work with a script, which is a challenge in itself, but I wanted to return to more intuitive filmmaking. I'm originally a documentary filmmaker and in my short films, I've so almost always navigated between a more formal scripted film. And then the next thing I wanna do is something more loose, more experimental, more um, documentary. And then my first feature was a scripted formal film. So I thought like I want to do something more intuitive, um, less scripted, maybe not scripted at all. So we started working without a script. And of course that has its challenges because you need to think about how you imagine the world. And we talked a lot about uh, the world, the characters, what they wanted. But one of the benefits was that um, well, we were preparing the film with an actress that we knew from the previous project in Mexico. And our original idea was that the characters were going to write to each other across distance. So um, Angel, Amanda's character being in this European city and um, Sofia, Alejandra's character being in Mexico. But then she um, called us, we were talking through Zoom, like um, what I wanted to do and that it was not scripted and all these things. And then she said, well, that's all great, but I'm not able to concentrate on the project right now because I'm going to go to a workshop in Paris, an acting workshop. So when I'm back, we can pick it up. And then suddenly I thought, well, Paris, Edinburgh, it's not too far. Do you want to hop over? And then we film everything here because I was having trouble to arrange long distance filming and finding a cinematographer that I could work with long distance and then it was available. So, um, and then we had to rejig everything but it felt relatively easy because we didn't have a written script if you have a written script then you're going to throw it entirely around that sort of feels like so much work and it's so painful and in this case there was no script so it was just like okay if they're together then if they're in the same place then what would they be talking about and what would be the structure of this new idea so it was um it was a challenge but it also gave us a lot of freedom i think to work initially without a script Yes, this is the um, this is, this is was the main issue. We didn't write the script. We just talked each other about the concept of the project, and then after the edition, we invented uh, the dialogues. And another issue was the acting because I didn't act before. It was a very challenge for me, but but I, we understood that we we didn't find another actor who can speak mystic which takes my mother town in Scotland. It was difficult to find anyone to speak this language. But that's, we decided that for me, it was easy to be part of the project as an actor. That was difficult, it was different for me, but I listened to the, the, um, uh, the organ. Mm, the, the directions. The direction, <laughs> the direction of the yes. because, uh, and the, I listen to the, uh, the tips from uh, Alejandra too, and then a combination of these um, advisors, was, and then I try to concentrate with the characters. Yeah, so you can't tell that it, <laughs> that's not something that you do, <laughs> yeah. you did an amazing job. Um, and I feel like uh, the authenticity comes through with not having that script. So I feel like there's a, a free, freeing of it, this kind of improv aspects where we're all kind of throwing out those ideas. Um, and I, yeah, that's awesome. I did, I could not tell <laughs> in any of that. So amazing. You overcame those challenges and yeah. turned them into like tools of success. That's so cool. We, we, we did have a story in mind, obviously a beginning, a middle and end. And when we filmed the, one of the last images where they walk away, I really knew this is going to be the final image of the film and the actors also knew, I did tell them this is going to probably be the end um, of the film. So there, there was a story and there was a storyline and there was a plan, but <laughs> yes, it was just yes. never written down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you have to have the idea, right? Like where how where are we going? And then exactly. it's the how we get there is is often yeah. um where we can, you know, start throwing out that uh those ideas. Um that's awesome. My next question is actually about like the collaboration elements of this film, so like working together and having your roles and then having that fluidity and in being able to kind of uh work together in uh a more 
you know, uh, or a less structured way and in, in having like, you know, the script and being able to be flexible in moving it, right? right? So what was, um, I guess, what was the impact of collaboration for this film? It was a very intimate collaboration because it was just the three of us. It was really just Armando and the actress mm -hmm. Alejandra and myself because I um, self-shot and I decided early on that because I was self-shooting, I wasn't going to record any sound other than camera sound. So all the sound was built afterwards. And I thought it would be doable because we didn't have any on-screen dialogue. So most of the dialogue is actually a voiceover uh, mm -hmm. because they're letters. So I thought, well, we can create the sound later on. That was a challenge, by the way. We can create the sound later on because it is a sort of distant and different world and that might actually be good to have to create it uh, from scratch. And I think the sound designer really enjoyed the process. I was a little bit worried when I knocked on his door and said, I have this film, there's no sound at all. And he went like, oh, it's like an animation. <laughs> so it was okay, but I was a bit worried when, when I decided to do that. Uh, but yes, it was just the three of us on set all the time. And then um, we filmed five days with Alejandra and then I continued to film, I think, another 12 days just yes. with um, Armando, some nature shots and also the scenes where he's alone, you know, where the main character, Angel, is alone. We did that later. But um, so it was always two, three people on set, uh, Max, and that makes it very... Um, on one hand, you need to do multiple roles and you need to ask the actor, please, please, can you hold this lens because I need to change. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, it, it gives you a lot of space to discuss things, which you don't have on a regular set where you have a lot of people standing around you. And then if you want to do something different around, about the scene, then you always feel certain pressure because there are all these people waiting. But now it's just you and, and the rest and you're a very small crew and there's enough space to talk about things. Yeah, each part of the process, it was a challenge because um, it was different, everything. Um, but I know how it uh, works. We have mm, more than 10 years working together. Um, I just follow the, the, um, her intuition because he, she embedded the idea, the concept. Uh, for me, it was very clear and we talked together. It was relatively easy. Awesome. Yeah, I love like smaller, intimate like crews. I think it, people just get things done when <laughs> there's less people to you know, yell at <laughs> to get it done. Um, awesome. I the the last question that I have um, for you both is, how do you hope audiences will react to your film? The audience reaction. You want to oh. go first? Oh, I I went the um, premiere. It was in Poland. Uh, the uh, people, the audience was very interested about the language, how we invented the idea, uh, um, the, 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 the end of the, um, the screening, a man asked me how, he, wa he, he was very impressive because he thought that um, to find a um, science fiction like Hollywood, but this was very different, very artistic approach. And this was different. He was very impressive with this approach. But it was very particular. I, I was happy with this uh, um, disruption for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that too. In, in Houston, somebody said to me, like, this is very different than what I expected. I expected special effects. And, and he said, I'm pleasantly surprised. But I wasn't expecting a contemplative sci-fi film. And I was like, now I have it. I'm just going to tell everybody this is a contemplative sci-fi film and then they know what they should expect because if you say sci-fi then people have a certain expectation of, um, of the film. What I noticed with the audience is that many audience members uh, to the screenings that I've been often react to the story, so to the love story between the two main characters. But then as a second thought, almost as an afterthought, suddenly say like, but well, climate change is a thing, right? And, and should we be worried? And what can we do? And how do we keep hope? And 
um, what what could we start um, doing differently? So I do think, and I like that. I hope that it was working that way, but I, I do like that it might not be the first reaction. And quite often when it is, it's very depressing and dismotivating and discouraging to think about climate change. But as an afterthought, you already felt uplifted by, by the story and the laugh and the hope. But then to think, well, but maybe we should be doing something or we should be thinking about it or we should be talking about it. I think I'm quite happy with that. I hope that that's the um, effect it continues to have. But that's what I've noticed so far in Q and A's that people first start talking about the language, then start talking about the characters and how they come together and all those kind of things. And then and then somebody suddenly says, "Yes, the, the climate change. Um, yeah, that's a thing too, right?" So yeah, I'm quite happy that uh, that it has been working like that. Thank, thank you. you for the invitation. Yes, thank you for the great um, chat interview. Yes. And uh, we're excited to uh, be screening the film at uh, the Philadelphia Latino uh, Film and Arts Festival, particularly because um, it's a film about migration as well. And I think it's a film that uh, speaks to a Latino audience. So we're very curious to know what you think. And if you want to leave us a message on our Facebook or Instagram or website, and then we really appreciate that.